Jenny Chen, and I know her in Twitter, and she posts some crazy thing happening in San Francisco. She's also a writer. She's passionate about Chinese history, especially related to World War Two. I just、um, post directly what I see. Uh, it, on the streets of San Francisco on my Twitter, and then sometimes I post about、um, unknown history, such as、um, in World War II, in the Pacific、uh, theater of World War II,、uh, and just post about history of what our people have gone through, what Chinese people have gone through, and how disconnected、um, politicians are to our real issues and at hand. So, yeah. Please be relaxed, okay? I'm not gonna set、yeah. you up. And、uh, t- <laughs> the reason, let me explain. The reason I、yeah. want to talk to you first, your Twitter. Let me read your Twitter introduction, self introduction. You said, "Follow to wit- witness the decline of California." Living in futuristic dis、uh, dystopia, you also either belongs to or, or you work for a, a, a nonprofit organization. What is that called? Pacific Atrocities Education. We archive documents from World War Two. A lot of the documents from World War Two、uh, that、um, from that we made from Japan、uh, have been destroyed, and so whatever survived. Uh, for for example, the Nazi what the Nazis did in World War Two, there are millions of pages. But then for、uh, what Japanese did to、um, Asia had only a couple hundred thousand pages, and whatever survived is just by chance because they were destroying all of the evidence by the end of the war. We started digital archiving. I also started、um, uh, collecting victim testimonies in the Bay Area as well as in Shanxi. I wrote. A historical fiction novel based on the Comfort Woman in Shanxi. I had never learned about these issues when I was in、uh, high school or college or growing up. I would hear about my grandma talking about、um, World War Two in Hong Kong or something like that. That's what she would call it. You know, growing up, I thought my grandma was just making things up.、Uh, <laughs> there, <laughs> this never happened. <laughs> and and then when she passed away, I found a box of military yen and a lot of things from、uh, from history, like the rice coupons. And so I thought, wow, my grandma was not really making things up. I read the Rape of Nanking. And then you mean the book by we, Iris Chang, who also yes, is a、um, Bay Area, right? She she lived、mm-hmm. in, actually in our area, but she unfortunately she committed suicide years ago, right? Yes, and then I went into Hoover Institute to see to continue because she actually not only does she、um, research into World War Two, she also、um, researched a lot into、um, about the Larkin Street Gang. Uh, the Vietnamese gang on Larkin Street.、Uh, she also had a lot、um, of research regarding Lowell as well as Chinatown. Her research was basically very interesting because it's like mainstream narrative that's been ignored. Like the mainstream media doesn't talk about、uh, like the things that she's researched. And so I I looked into it further, and then、um, I found out that. Diane Feinstein had declassified a lot of the World War II war crimes documents. Oh, really?、Yeah. Um, in 2014, and so then I started also researching from there. And、uh, what before COVID, I was out of town very often because I went to、uh, DC to search、um, the documents. But now, since COVID, I've been stuck. <laughs> Oh、in this, I call it the futuristic dystopian city. <laughs> Maybe you can just digest your material a little bit better, right? Dig them、yeah. deeper. No, it's totally not a bad、oh, thing、cool. at all. Great. And also, I found this time that to really organize、uh, our digital collection into like different types of collections. 
you are millennial and、uh, you have the passion to pursue this path.、Uh, you just mentioned about how well or、uh, the Jewish people have have done for their atrocity past, right? But、uh, mm -hmm. it seems to me like in our、uh, community, less people are working on this kind of issues. What's the link or connection between the work you you are doing and the the local issue you also very caring? Actually, at the end of the day, is humanity. Why should people live in conditions? Especially California is not a poor state, right? And there are some areas where I was picking up chicken wings in Santong,、uh, <laughs> and along the way I saw a dead body、uh, with a yellow tarp on top, and that's something that I thought I would only write about from World War Two, and yeah, and I was very shocked. To see a yellow tarp because I've heard about it from my friend who, who are hanging outside all the time. You know, my friends are in the、uh, they're we work in the hospital, and they tell me that yeah, people OD on the street all the time. I did not believe them that you know the OD the overdose rate was higher than COVID death rate in San Francisco until I saw it and with my own eyes. Then I thought to myself, oh wow, this is something has really gone wrong. Something along the line of humanity has really gone wrong for this to actually be a perfectly normal thing to happen in the city. How common is that thing? I mean, we don't we are not living in the city, but this but from your tweets, it seems pretty bad. I'm not sure. I know the the Twitter has its problem, right? It has it can、yeah. only just you can only write down so many words in one tweet, and、uh, sometimes it definitely emphasizes on certain things. But yeah, from just reading your tweets, it seems it's pretty bad. Yeah, so I thought at first that it's only a tenderloin issue. Then yesterday I drove by Masonic. And people used to say, "I don't know if you heard of this before. You don't go east of Fillmore Street, blah blah blah." But the lines are blurring because Masonic is west of Fillmore, so it's pushing. And I feel like, and I feel like people are normalizing this. So then humanity is deteriorating. And I have also seen on nine、um, on Tenth Avenue next to the library. Um, there's a guy who who has been camping there in front of this vacant storefront for at least I don't know、um, half a year now. And I saw a kid going to the library, and then this guy was half naked. Or、well, actually, he was he was actually completely naked. And then it's just not normal societal behavior. In、yeah. a sense, so you、um, you were saying you move you moved here when you around ten, right? And the,、mm -hmm. how what have what have changed? You think it's a huge difference, but be, between huge and, difference, huge difference.、Um, it's very anyone who said that tenderloin has always looked like that, they're delusional. Because、um, I used to wait for the bus on Turk and Jones, and now、uh, adjacent corner from the、um, Turk and Jones bus stop is now a safe sleeping camp, which a lot of tents are just around there, and it smells very bad, and it's not. I don't think it's very safe for hygiene. You know, in、uh, on the news. I see that in other countries to fight COVID, they clean the streets, right? But then during the COVID, San Francisco brought all the people,、uh, all the drug users, to our streets to start. You know,、uh, there's basically like porta potty, and they started pooping on our street. <laughs> so I just don't think that's very hygienic in the middle of a pandemic. In your Twitter、yeah. account, you pinned up one long video. It、uh, seems you shot a, 
a, a scene along the Amtrak. track uh, is where is no, it? No, it's Caltrain. Caltrain is in San Francisco yeah. station, right? Yes. And uh, uh, what do you think of the progressivism? Play what a kind of role in this deteriorating of San Francisco. I just know that every politician is very disconnected from the real world. You mean you every know, single one of them? It's a very tough situation, but it's only getting worse with these people. Honestly, um, have you heard about this woman who died um, during New Year's Eve? Right. I didn't. And uh, tell me about that. So the guy who, well, the woman who got killed uh, was killed by a guy who had been um, released several times before um, crashing his car into her. And I just feel like that could have been prevented mm. um, if the DA had been doing his job. Um, it's also a sense of humanity. Like Visha, who got killed at Anza Vista, like all the Asian lives, who all the Asians who have been attacked on the streets. Yeah, yeah, that's those things could have been prevented if we had law and order on our streets. But we're, currently, we don't have law and order. We're it's chaos, right? So no one's life matters, and and until rules are, I mean, until people follow rules until we actually have a societal, unless people actually follow our societal contract, we can't have safety. And that's also, yeah, it's just, we can't move forward like that as a society. Let's speak about that uh, DA. I saw some video recently. He, firstly, uh, he, there's a video. He talked with uh, the governor, Gavin Newsom, I think by a, out dining place, right? And he encouraged mm -hmm. uh, Governor Newsom said, "Ah, nobody wants to recall you. I mean, sure, I'm sure you're gonna keep your office or something." And this DA, uh, Chesa Bodin, I think he has some policy. Uh, he argued that uh, there's a, a systemic racism toward the the underprivileged community. Actually, I think their ideology is great. You know, a restorative justice is not a binary thing. I've been thinking about it because there's only so much I can say in my tweets. But I've been thinking about it. Restorative justice is actually a great idea. We need to reintegrate people who have done crimes into our society. But how he's been doing it, there's no program. There's no instruction. There's no infrastructure, right? So then people who are just being released, there's no, you can be going in for one crime, get released, and then get out, and then get back in for another crime. And then there's no improvement for our society. And so, and then also regarding systematic racism, how they have been also phrasing um, Asians in, uh, I don't know if you realize, if you know, if you've noticed, uh, because Asians are doing well in tests now, so then now we're um, called white adjacent or um, privileged. But if you read my books, you realize that Asians are not so privileged. We have faced a lot in uh, in history, actually. Um, and for example, um, all the atrocities that's been done to China during World War II, and but now we're so-called privileged and if you've seen chinatown how th some residents live right you would not think that's a privileged life and a lot of these kids who grew up in chinatown um bus all the way to lowell to go to school yeah, yeah, right and yeah. so to take away meritocracy at its very core it's <laughs> just it's just not something yeah it's just against progress <laughs> That's why I think people are trying to recall those school boards members, and some of them are already being recalled, right? I don't know. I just uh, I just retweet people, but I do think someone like uh, Mankit uh, Mankit Lamb, 
he is a Chinese parent. He's from Hong Kong. He's doing all he can to provide for his kid a better education. His his kids go to public school, so I feel like at, the Chinese value is to have meritocracy, right? Meritocracy is a, a, is a very base. Yeah, that's a core point. value in our yeah, society. Yeah, that's a core, core value. value. Yeah. Maybe sometimes yeah, it's too core. core. <laughs> and I it's mean, also established, years, in family, yeah. right? in established in family, right? In family, this there's a meritocracy. If, oh, speaking of meritocracy, <laughs> why you have this Twitter name, a Chinese name, Lin Bai Fei Wu? In English, it's like a neighboring white trash. What What is that? What does it even mean? Oh, white adjacent trash. Actually, I had no idea until I saw a um a few of the politicians' tweets about um people being white adjacent,、oh, and then I, I thought that's an interesting term. And then um, and then、oh. some because we. My tweets don't fall into their narrative. So then, they at first they thought I was a white man、um, tweeting, and I must have been living in some redneck country. That's what they assumed, and so <laughs> I just put、oh. the white adjacent trash together because we because my tweets don't really fall into the narrative. You're very outspoken. Sometimes, uh, uh, even maybe a little radical in some people's eyes. <laughs> But I I just feel like oh we need people more people like that and it's also、uh, I, yeah I really don't see many people with a Chinese last name tweet stuff like that on Twitter. It's just my opinion, right? And I should、When、keep it to myself.、It? When did you start、last? that account? Ah,、uh, just last year, just one year ago.、Uh. A lot of Chinese Americans don't feel like they've been heard for a while because the narrative is that it's either it's very, very extreme narratives. I feel like、mm -hmm. uh, one narrative of the Chinese is that we're white adjacent, we're privileged, but then you also see narratives that are being played out that are like, oh,、um, but we need more resources, and then. Yeah, but then nowadays, I think in 2020, the narrative that was being played out the most was、um, against meritocracy. So tell me more about your writings. Yeah, so actually,、uh, I co-founded it because I thought our stories are really untold. Because think about it, World War II, you don't really hear about China, Japan, and World War II, especially not in the West. And I've never really. Um, learned about it in school because I've gone to school mostly in the United States, and so, and even some people from、uh, China had never heard about Unit Seven Three One, and so I thought it's it's something to do to really tell our story after the war. I mean, after World War Two, then you have.、Um, The Civil War, right? And then、uh, part of the people who fought the war moved to Taiwan, and then because of、uh, of the continuous、um, endurance of this war, and then a lot of the、um, uh, people moved to Taiwan, and then they also moved elsewhere. And so our history is not told. And then also in our culture, you don't. This is like a taboo topic. You're not going to talk about your suffering as much. Facing this existed. Issue is just like politically, we are divided. And what's your position? And how? What's your approach?、Uh, I just want to tell the stories that are untold. Just like my、um, Twitter account, I just want to tell the stories of the people who have overdosed.、Um, actually,、uh, one of my fo Twitter follower,、um, she's missing her son in in San Francisco. Because her son、uh, was addicted to drugs, and she couldn't find him for the longest time, and she she said that in the news they're not talking about this all that much, right? And so then she finds out about what's going on on the streets of San Francisco from my Twitter account, which I thought was very powerful. And for my books, I also want to tell the people the stories of the victims who have never told their stories to other people. What's the biggest and, discovery in those archived? This declassified files so far. Overall, I think it's very important that I got to see things that were documented in English 
by the United States government that they had known about Unit 731 all this time. They had known about biological uh, weapon being used on Chinese soil, but we, it's something that we don't talk about. Um, and then secondly, it just shows, um, it's something to hear from my grandma that this had happened in China, but then it's something else to actually see this in an official document. Do you think there's a possibility like uh, we have enough material to produce some uh, visual form of uh, like a documentary? I think we do have enough material as it stands because um, one of the, some of these letters even read like spy novel. So there was an incident where um, a Japanese spy was trying to grab uh, not even a Japanese spy, a Japanese scientist was trying to get uh, yellow fever from Rockefeller Institute. And uh, Rockefeller Institute was not going to allow um, the Japanese scientist to go get it, uh, to go get the yellow fever strain. And then um, the Japanese scientists offer money to uh, for the Rockefeller um, Institute to offer one of the scientists money to extract some blood from a monkey with yellow fever, so then they can do the research at Unit 731. And when I read that in an official letter of uh, someone reporting that incident, I thought it was a scene from the spy novel or something. It's so unreal. It almost feels like it's fiction. Mm -hmm.